What's up, everyone? The Nationals win game six. They go to a game seven. This game had it all. Bat runs, interference, go ahead, home runs, and an ejection. What's going on, everybody? How are you doing? Welcome to Talking Baseball. We've got a fucking lot to discuss on this game. So much happened. So much happened. There's so many talking points. I'm very excited. My name is John Boy. I'm coming to you from New Jersey. I got my fellow Jake coming to you from Denver. I think they got nine inches of snow. Jake, how are you doing? Yeah, nine was an exaggeration. There's there's a half a foot out there from a couple days. It was a weird one. Don't normally don't normally get durations of snow like this. Normally it's like, holy shit, something rolled off the mountains and hit us quick. But it was like it's like a day and a half. It was actually kind of cool. Snow globe effect. But, so, uh, uh, avalanche. Yeah, that's the rumor. Avalanche and bat runs is what everyone's are talking about bat these runs. days. Bat runs. You like that term? Bat runs. I don't. <laughs> I don't, but I'm okay with it. It sounds so not swaggy because I think it's not swaggy. Right. Well, uh, there's a couple different things going on there. Yeah, bat runs, bat carries. Ooh, um, bat carries I mean, worse. Yeah, I did, the bat runs felt like... You just combined the two first things you thought of, and it works. Well, bat flip it, the same thing. Right. Bat drop. Um, bat, yeah. bat hold. It hold the carry, the, the baton pass. I don't know. There's so many different ways you could go with it. We're making up new baseball. Uh, and, Jim, we, uh, we had some tech issues. I think we got a couple people that are riding out the storm with us. Denver Storm. Look at that shit. Um but yeah, man, I'm. I loved everything during the game. I hated everything after the game. Yeah. Well, I didn't because a lot of people want to break down, so I got some up. I got three breakdowns up of this game already, and I, there's a fourth one coming after this. So I have some marshmallows to reward myself. Yeah. Putting eight. them. In, putting, now seven. Now seven. I'm putting them in my coffee. Okay. It's gonna be like a nice little treat. Wow. So I'm excited. Yeah, the conversations after the game. And we'll, we'll get into it because that's kind of what everyone wants to talk about. And yeah. we will be talking about the interference call, the ejection, first ejection in a World Series in some amount of years. I forget. Since Bobby Cox in Atlanta. Bobby Cox. Bobby Cox. Chip Hale, big loser on the night? Uh, Chip Hale's a winner, man. Warrior. Chip, Chip- Chip Hale fought as good of a fight as he could yeah. against someone he couldn't fight back against. Uh, <laughs> Chip Hale, if it was an NFL game, Chip Hale would have had like five holding penalties. He did his best, man. Dave Martinez was bull rushing. Dude, that was funny. Chip Hale is the assistant or bench coach or whatever. And he was trying to hold Dave Martinez back, if you haven't seen it. It was wild, man. I uh... There was a second... And you could see it in, like, the, the frames of the video where Dave Martinez, it looks like he could have got a shot in against the home plate ump, and I'm kind of rooting for it. <laughs> he was actually more mad at the other ump who must I don't know what he said, but he was yelling at the home plate ump, and then the other ump said something, and that's when Dave kind of, like, flipped shit. Set it off, yeah. And then he's making a huge scene, and he yells to the home plate ump, what the fuck are you looking at? And that's right before he got ejected. And it's like, Dave, come on. Everyone's like 50,000 people are looking at you, man. Yeah. Eyes on you currently. (laughs) Oh, there's so much to talk about. I'm excited for game seven, man. Hey, we got another game of baseball. We got this series to a game seven. So good job by the series. Good job by the series. Good job by the Astros not caring, thinking they were going to win the first two games. Good job by Justin Verlander falling off a little bit at the right time. Um, Things worked out. Yeah. Do you have a burn? I mean, it's kind of... Oh, yeah. So has the annoyance of the debate weighed you down from your excitement of everything that happened? No, I, I'd say, and yeah, I might as well get these out. Obviously, the the debate call, um, and I um, I don't know, for some of the baseball stuff, I, I try to not to watch it before we get on, but I saw you posted it this morning. I was waiting for you, and I was like, you know what, I, 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 w- I want to listen to this a little bit just to see, because if you and me were on a different page, we might not make it through the whole episode, to be completely honest. And I I clicked on it, you're talking about your my breakdown. breakdown. Yep. 
and uh, I think the first word you s- that I heard you say was judgment call. And the fact that so many people have lost sight of what those words mean is it's mind blowing to me. It's yeah. I'm n- I'm not a person with a good brain. I openly admit that. But the fact that so many people are being vehement about a judgment call when guess what the worst judgment was used like yes everything from there was followed up they couldn't review it they could not challenge it you're totally right but the judgment was wrong that's the whole fucking problem and that's uh the part that really made me mad after the game was joe tory came in defense well and then i mean Bregman we're getting into it but and then and then Bregman and Soto both walking down off their bat runs or their run bats or whatever you're calling them. That was the most disappointing thing of, uh, of the night. Oh, OK. I, I disagree with you. I like their responses because I think oh, that's a whole let's burn it. Then we get, we have so yeah. much to talk. So there's a little preview of all the conversations yeah. we're going to have. I am excited. Burn, Jakey, burn! World Series Game 6, a rematch of Game 2 with a much different vibe. Justin Long, Verlander, and the Strohs with the chance to be accepted as a new dynasty if they weren't win versus Stephen Colbert Strasburg, who are hoping his Nats could have one more daily show. Top one, Tony Rendoni slaps a shift-beating RBI single to give his Nats an early lead. But here's a tip, kids. Butterfly that glove because Houston knew what was coming in the first. Play the music. Jose Altuve. Jose Altuve. RBI sack fly. Speaking of fly, Alex Bregman hits the scared little kid home alone home run because he's walking around with his baseball bat. Astros two, Nats one after one. Both starters would lock in until top five. Adam Levine eaten with the moves like Jagger. Solo job to tie it. Mr. Soto Dolo, Juan Solo for the lead. He carries his bat for protection as well. Three, two, Nats. Top seven controversy on the Trey Tina Turner interference. Looks like it's going to kill a rally until Anthony Wren don't throw it there. Two run Yabo. It's five to two. Tony Dubacks comes out with a double in the ninth for the Geico runs. But how about Steven Strasburg? 8.1, seven Ks, two earn run only in the first. Doolittle does a little as seven two Nats final. We are going to game seven. Jakey Burns walking like a kid home alone with his baseball bat. When else does someone walk around with a baseball bat? That's kind of it. Spot the lie. Uh, every now and then I, I, I just do a little Joe Torre where I just like oh. have a baseball bat in my hand. You know how I used to sit sure. in the dugout? I actually have a mini hockey stick that I found recently in the closet, and I've just been holding that. But yeah. Saw that. It's pretty good. Now I want to talk about Strasburg. I want to talk about so much about this game. Strasburg Let's is do the some real. Let's baseball first because it was really good baseball. Strasburg is the real deal motherfuckers yeah man 8.1 and I, so the next breakdown i want to do i i said i want to do another one is on he, the tipping pitches so in his post game he said oh yeah they were they were they were i had to start shaking my glove because they were all over me they saw what was coming after the first inning he went into the tunnel and his pitching coach i don't know what coach he was like thank god he let me know and after that he goes scoreless for 7.1 kind of yeah. ridic- kind of ridiculous and crazy well, and Jim, uh, what the crazy part was that he did that after the game and I was watching all that and you're like, oh, cool. And there's been so much about pitch tipping this World Series. What I think it has gotten overlooked on this, I mean, Guriel hit a bomb to left after Bregman. Um, Altuve uh, we'll to got, some, got some decent wood on it that like... And again, knowing what we know now, that those were essentially going to be the only runs Strasburg was going to give up because he was tipping his pitches. I mean, think about how much different... Like, what would we be saying about Steven Strasburg right now if he gave up three in the first or four in the first? How much leash does he get later in the game? Do they do they panic and go to Scherzer? Like, that's right off the rip. Uh, something that I don't think is being talked about at all that could have... Totally affected this World Series, Steven Strasburg, everyone. Yeah. 
He gave up two hits in the first and then two hits the rest of the way. Two runs in the first and then two run and then zero runs the rest of the way. I want to go look into it and see what he was doing with his glove. Because he, he said he, he started shaking his glove before every pitch and flaring it. Yeah, he started butterflying it. Um and so yeah, I don't I don't know if he just what if it was hand position, like that was the glass no thing or whatever, but he he went full butterfly the rest of the game. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh I mean Will he get World Series MVP if the Nats win? I think this is something we do at the end. Um, there's a few different candidates for each team. I mean, dude, a, a guy had five RBIs in this game, but you'd have no idea because he looked like he was at his family barbecue having a good time. Uh, I I really can't look at just straight stats for World Series MVP. Just my personal opinion because – like Rendon's last two, while important, his first two were even more important. But really, the Eaton home run was the most important swing, and then the Soto home run. Like Eaton and Soto had the most important swings. Yeah, and I mean, it, you say those last two aren't important, but it was a three-run game. If if not, Sean Doolittle not, lets two runners on base, <laughs> I, I shouldn't have said they're not important. I just think there were bigger swings and moments, and some of these games where you just like. Stacking stats works for Hall of Fame and stuff for me, but f- and even for like regular season MVP, I don't care. But like when you have the small sample size, like who changed the game? But but I, I'm not trying to knock Rendon. He had a fantastic game. I yeah, just, and just, I mean Soto Soto's got three homers, and including the one to take the lead in this one. Strasburg with two wins, and how crazy he he's been. I mean, what if Max Scherzer goes out and wins Game Seven tonight? I mean, you can. You could go up and down the board, and it's same with the Astros. I know we're. Uh, did you hear my uh, patterns I, tweet? I did not see your patterns tweet. I must have missed the pattern. Scherzer, this 2009 playoffs opened up uh, with Scherzer. That wasn't a pattern tweet. That was a poetry tweet. Someone responded poetry, and someone responded pattern, yeah. so I liked it. But it's pretty cool. Scherzer yeah. opened up the 2019 playoffs. They started with him pitching in a do or die game for both teams, and the last game of the 2019 postseason we'll have scherzer starting a do or die game for both teams cool yeah hashtag cool hashtag cool uh all right so they open up right away and they get the nats actually score first verlander has first inning woes but they only push one across and it's very much small ball eating bunts to move him over beats out an infield single trey turner kind of a a bigger storyline later on and then Bunts him over, and then how do you get the third? Or how did he score? What's did he the score question? Him? How did the, the Nets Rendon score? Rendon hit a shift beating single? Yes, yes, he was yes. on second, and he was on second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew it was a single. So they small ball Verlander, which Eaton man, and he's going to get overlooked in all this melee. Eaton had a crazy game, sack bunt that helped push a run across, a walk, game tying home run, and then what did he do in his last step at it? Something else that was positive. Hit by pitch. Hit by pitch. He's just all over the yeah. fucking box score. What a pesky fuck. Yeah. Um and I and, and I'm sitting there thinking, oh shit, you know, Verlander first inning woes again. I wonder how much that creeps into the mindset of just the dugout and Verlander like, ugh. But they return fire immediately. They take the lead in the first. And I gotta be honest, from then on, the place was rocking and I was like, that's eh, might be it. Like that's there's a lot of momentum here, but baseball yeah, doesn't you, care about that. You and you and Lindsay Edler with the Athletic were having a little bit of a like, oh, we've we've seen this Astros game about five times this playoffs already. Um, the other team will stay close. Houston will have a a break and then a big inning and and call it a game. But yeah, Houston rallied, and I I think the biggest at bats in the game were top of the third. Justin Verlander had just retired seven in a row. Um, and then Adam Eaton comes up. He goes down one, two, foul ball, three straight balls, uh, seven pitch walk. So you're like, okay, A, you broke up Verlander's seven hitters in a row streak. B, you keep him out on the mound to throw more bullets. So Rendon comes up after him. He goes down one, two, and then he has that 10 pitch at bat, which he ends up, that ends up in a walk. So Justin Verlander just went from cruise control to now he's got two on with Soto, and he's in basically a 25 pitch inning. He gets Soto to, to ground out, but I think the bigger thing there is, A, Verlander had to work, and he looked like vincible again. Like you thought there was a chance that Justin Verlander locked in and was the Justin Verlander we've known for the past few years. 
And the bigger thing, that's the heart of their lineup, and they just saw a lot of Verlander pitches, and you saw it come around the next round of at-bats. That's a great, great find, great call. A lot, a lot of people probably talking about because it it's just two walks that led to nothing, but in the grand scheme of things, so many pitches were thrown, so many pitches were seen. Great call, Jake. I didn't even have that a nugget in my head because Soto that's grounds true. out at the, to end that inning. Yeah. But, but, yeah, if he gets eaten there, then it's, what, retires eight in a row and Verlander's sitting pretty going into the fourth? It would have been eight in a row and he would have been essentially quick math. He would have been like <laughs> 45 pitches through three. Instead, I think he was closer to 60, something like that. Wow. That's cool. That's how much it can change. And that all lies on fucking Adam Eaton again being a pesky yeah. fuck. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and then, I mean, the next action really was the fifth inning when the Nationals take the league and, and Eaton goes deep. What was it, a 1-0 pitch or a, or 0-1 pitch? Well, I, I think in the fourth, the Nats got a couple guys on. Kendrick had a single, and then Zimmerman walked. Um, and, it, and again, I think it was kind of that, that wear-out effect again. Even And then that inning end with that Jan Gomes... Uh, kind of fake foul ball homer. You were like, yo, did he rock that? Wait, is that foul? Oh, it's fair. Brantley caught it. That was weird. Yeah. Uh, but we, you you saw Verlander starting to work a little bit, and then, yeah, Turner fouls off. Eaton gets him uh, with the home run, kind of a slider over the middle. Uh, Rendon flies out, and then Soto with the, uh, the bat run. The bat run. Yeah, okay. So Ian's home run was a fucking terrible slider from, yeah. from Verlander. Just hanged it and eaten, crushed it. The Soto at bat, I did a little breakdown on it because I was doing the bat run breakdown. He's uh, he gets a two zero fastball that you know he gets into a two zero count. And he's geared up for Verlander's fastball, but Verlander gets him high fastball. He just fouls it back, and Soto's thinking, "Damn, that was my shot." Then comes that man. Then comes the two one pitch, right? And Verlander tries to go the same high fastball, but bring it inside on him. And he misses a tiny bit. But Verlander, <laughs> Verlander's yelling that it was a strike. And the ump said, no, it's a ball. And then you can see Soto say, no, that's a ball. But you can see Soto. Ball. ball. You can see Soto just locked in like, oh, yeah, he's going to bring that again because he wants to prove it's a strike. He thinks that was a really good pitch that he just didn't get the call on. So he's going to throw that motherfucker again. And Soto <laughs> fucking tattoos it man that was a bomb and then i mean this can go into the bat run conversation and the quotes quotes about it after the game so bregman he hits his home run he carries the bat all the way to the first base coach and tries to hand it off to him and the astros first base coach wanted nothing to do with it he was like fuck that dude like i'm not just gonna yeah. carry your bat for you and Altuve's reaction was very much cringe, like, yeah, yeah. that's not good. And um, I think I like Bregman's quotes on it afterwards because it was lame and stupid and, like, too much. Because they lost. <laughs> but he, even his own teammates and his first base coach, like, weren't into it. Like, that's, like, dude, yeah. don't, well, that's not necessary. It's good entertainment. Um but what were his that's comments? That's what baseball at, needs. Baseball uh, needs more entertainment. I mean, I, I I loved all of it, Mike. But my opinion is, it, it didn't come off as like Bregman's a badass. It came off as like, dude, that's a little much. But yeah, that's I, I agree with that. I saw you know there's a couple of counts that are like, are you believing this dude Bregman? Man, he's doing it again. It's like no, like it's it's something. I mean, we just we're making up fake terms to call it, so it's something new, different, and entertaining, which I like that. But yeah, to think it's like. Uh, badass or rebellious or anything like no like i'm not angry that he did it it's good for baseball that he's having Great fun for baseball but my personal opinion is like it didn't come off as like that was cool so anyway when juan soto because everyone's like you got to throw at him blah blah when juan soto does it that's the perfect retaliation like that's what makes it fun if 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 that upsets you that he did that you do it back you know and he had a bomb yeah. and he actually Bat drops right in front of the, the first base coach. Got to get the bat drop in for Soto. And they're both go-ahead home runs. So I like the symmetry there. It's Soto's comments. Now, maybe I'm just reading this into how I want to read into them. I mm. 
because I didn't hear them. I I read them as very tongue in cheek. Like, oh yeah, when I saw him do it, I thought it looked cool, so I thought I'd do it as well. Not honest. Oh no, I think yeah, I think I think you're doing that. You're forgetting that he's there. There's a rumor out there he's 21 years old. Um, but yeah, I I don't know. I loved our our buddy Craig Calcaterra, who's uh, if you don't follow him on the on the Twitter sphere, he's a little bit of <laughs> a loose cannon, I guess, for the baseball community. Um, he had my favorite quote. Let me let me see. Oh. So he he did after the game. He goes, A.J. Hint, Bregman shouldn't have carried that bat. And then he does Dave Martinez. Soto shouldn't have done it either. Bregman, I'm sorry I did that. Juan Soto, it was awesome Bregman did it, so I thought it'd be fun too. All this is so fun. And then he just ends it with a, and a little child shall lead them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I liked Soto's quotes after it, and I like that Bregman kind of, because he did it first. So... And they lost, so you have to eat your little humble pie. Yeah, you have, you have to. So I, I mean, I liked everything about that. I mean, I, I again, I don't think Bregman looked cool. I've I've been on here a lot saying I like Bregman. I like that he plays the bad guy. Yeah, I, ju- I just it it hurts me that when it was happening live, it was awesome. Like, okay, Bregman does it. He hits the big home run. I mean. Th- you know, if you're a Houston fan, you're starting to think Bregman, like World Series MVP, he's hit a couple big home runs now. He he kind of turned around his whole postseason, and then he does he does something new, which I mean, take it how you want it, but I mean, we're we're here talking about it. And then Soto matches it and copies, and you're like, yes, yeah, that's exactly how this is supposed to happen. And then afterwards and during it, everyone's like, yeah, let the kids play bat flips. We got bat runs. Oh, we're doing all sorts of stuff. And then immediately. After after the game, everyone comes off of it with the Joe Torre stuff. I'm like, come on, everyone. Like, we just had one of the best nights in baseball in a long time, and now we're walking away. I hear you there. And and that, that Craig Calcaterra tweet school because Soto was the only one that was like, why, why would I apologize? It was fun. Right? And, uh, hey, eventually that's what will be happening. You know, it's slowly getting grandfathered in. So that's cool. It was cool. I was shocked when Eaton and Soto went back to back. Like, I was like, oh, my God. And I got to think Houston feeling the same way. Or the fans. Yeah. Just utter gut punch. Like, what the fuck? And, Jim, I don't know where you go to to check out the the pitch sequencing, um, but every pitch to Soto in that at-bat was a high fastball. He started with two high away. Um, and then it's the one that Soto fouls off, and then it's the missed up and in pitch. But everything is a four seam fastball, 94, 94 to ninety six, to the guy that's the best high fastball hitter in Major League Baseball. And like I know Verlander lives up there, but a Verlander, you haven't had the same gusto, and b this is the dude that's best at it in baseball. So I I don't know if I'm a Houston fan, I would be questioning that in the fifth inning, you don't throw one breaking ball. I'd have to look at what he threw Soto in his at bat beforehand because Verlander very much has pre written plans of how he's going to attack guys. You know what I mean? And we saw yeah. it with Robles. I was trying to having a lot of fun with that because he was straight up bullying Robles. Torture, yeah. I mean, he went five straight high fastballs to Robles, treated him like a pitcher in the National League, like not a care in the world. They weren't even good yeah. fastballs, they were just here, fucking, you can't hit that. Let's get on with you. Then his next at bat threw a get me over breaking ball for strike one. Like you're not going to swing at this. Then pulled the string a little bit to get him to swing and miss. Then pulled the leash even more to get him to fully chase with the check swing. Robles guy fucking like embarrassed his first two at bats. Yeah. Umps aren't team Robles right now either. He got a couple tough calls. Young guy versus Verlander. Never mind, kind of the, the hangover from the other game. But, um, and then I, I I think what leads us to next that gets overlooked is that the Nationals do that. Um, they take the lead off off of two solo homers, one to two to three to two. Soto mimics uh, Houston's MVP. Bottom five. The the very next half inning, Reddick gets a single to set the table for the top of the order, and Springer hits another double. It's second and third. One out, and that Altuve at bat. Um, Rob Friedman, sick emoji. The Altuve at bat versus... Wait, which Altuve at bat? 
I might have been making a breakdown and missed it. So top, it's bottom five. Okay, so I was, de- I was definitely making a, a bat run breakdown, so I missed yes. this. Okay, so what yes. happened? So Reddick singles. He sets the table for the top of the order. So it's one oh, out, Reddick yeah, yeah. on first. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Springer double. Second and third, one out, Jose Altuve at the plate. He throws his dirtiest pitch of the game. He throws a high changeup that just makes Altuve look silly. Um, and then he throws a curveball that Altuve falls off, so it's 0-2. And he just bounces one in the dirt. The whole oh. world it was coming. Smoltz, said it on the broadcast. He's like, Jan Gomes, you better be ready. Like, everyone knows what's about to happen, but it's how good does it look? Can Altuve lay off? Or if it's not good enough, what can Altuve do with it? He threw an awesome curveball, um, made Altuve look silly. I remember that now because I remember thinking, wait, he didn't foul that? I thought, like, the way it looked, there, he had to have foul tipped it. And then they just walked away, and I was like, oh, he swung and straight up missed that? Yeah, he he swung through it, and you you saw in slow motion, you could almost see the mindset of Altuve. Like, okay, it looks like it's going to have a lot of the plate. It's probably the curveball. Okay, it's definitely the curveball. It's a good curveball. Let me go defensive mode, and he still couldn't get it. Um, and then uh, <laughs> uh, even more overlooked because Strasburg threw some filth there, and Altuve got worked. Brantley hit one on the laces, but it was right at Turner, and he makes the nice uh, pick on it. But that ball, if if Turner doesn't pick that ball, we'd be like, oh, that was a hot shot. Tur- Turner did his best to stay in front of it. But he makes the play, and that stops the instant kind of counterpunch. Yeah. Big. Do you think they should have let Strasburg keep going? I mean, a little bit. I, I've always had a little bit in of that in me. Uh Unless, like, I don't know if the if they think those 10 pitch, pitches give Strasburg a Hail Mary chance to come into tomorrow, or today, excuse me. Um, otherwise, yeah, I would have let him finish it to kind of make a World Series memory. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. At the same time, Doolittle comes in and kind of does his thing, so it's, it's, it's moot. Yeah. All right, let's get to the fun conversation. The interference. Yes. Trey Turner. I'm going to try and come at this as as hinged as possible or whatever, you know, because I because I part of me hates the people telling me they made the right call. And I feel like the personality that says that is just like the personality that would go be an umpire. So that's my rude comment, I guess. Okay. There's two issues here, Jake. There's what the rule is, and there's what the rule should be. So let's divide those right away. Sure. The rule is that if the batter... The rule is it's a judgment call. So there's no hard X's and O's. And if the ump thinks that the runner got in the way of the ball, he can make that call. So... By rule, it's totally allowed that the umpire make makes this call. There, I, there's no way you can say, you know, that's why they say it's not reviewable because he's allowed to make that call. The issue is whether you think that's should have been called. Trey Turner runs straight line. He doesn't know where the throw is coming. He has no idea what to do. And the rule says you have to be on the, you know, the last 45 feet – you have to be making your way to foul territory to touch the bag, which is in fair territory. And he kind of does that. Like his last couple steps, he lunges over. He rode the line for longer than he probably should have. Um, so like by rule, you the ump can say that that was interference. I think that that's crazy to use that judgment there because he really didn't go out of his way he didn't even he he beat the throw anyway there's it's just nonsense that never gets called every runner right-handed runner runs in that same path when they're trying to leg out an infield single it's impossible not to and you yeah. don't see that get called so often if you watch the MLB I could put a montage together of right-handed runners trying to beat out infield singles and I guarantee they all make that same path but the but then the what the people will say is well it doesn't matter his path it just matters that he got in the way of the glove and that's where 
we get into well it's a judgment call so the ump like making that judgment i just disagree with and the rule itself is so stupid yeah so that's uh the the rule thing we covered to a degree and i mean there's people online debating um because it's three feet from the line it's not just that box it's it's the dirt itself and you've got people some people are mixing softball rules and baseball rules there's a, i mean it's a nightmare out there right now um it's a judgment call it, it it's it's a judgment call if they if they had called this the other way um i think joe torrey would be up there after the game saying yep that's the umpire's judgment he made the right call um just because it was a judgment call. So what, whatever the ump calls there and says is right, I mean, it's kind of like the, the a, a little bit the Joe West home run call from last year. Like, that was his judgment, so that was the call. If his judgment had been that it was a home run, um, it that judgment would have been right. So that's I, where judgment's getting lost is, is kind of unfathomable for me a little bit. But, yeah, and you – I think it's funny. Everyone's talking about like, well, actually, you know, for the fielder or the pitcher, they're told to throw at that runner because there's a chance they get that girl. Guess what? A lot of base runners are told to run up in there too because it's a mind fuck. If you've ever been a third baseman catcher or a pitcher trying to make that throw to first base and you see a base runner in the way, it's like a defensive back. So then you're you're saying, okay, am I about to hit this guy? What if I miss him? It rolls into the outfield. Like it, that's it's a whole game of cat and mouse that kind of isn't organic in the game of baseball, but it's kind of coached both ways. Trey Turner did none of that. You see a lot of guys who hit tappers and you'll see him run into the glass grass excuse me uh to kind of get in the way as a mind fuck he didn't do any of that he ran straight there and I think that's what's getting lost in interpretation everyone's like well he wasn't in the box he wasn't running in the box well he was running on dirt and that's the judgment call there the umpire could have easily made the judgment like no he was running where he was supposed to be um and and I don't know. I mean, there's... If he didn't call it, do you think there would be anybody? Like, so, all right, take the people that are saying, actually, that's the right call. Do you think that same person that's arguing that, if he didn't call interference, would those same people be commenting, that was interference? Because I don't think so at all. I, I'd say right now, it's the internet's kind of 90-10. It was the wrong call. And and I think there would be a a ten ninety the other way. It, it would be mostly Houston fans saying like, "Well, it's the umpire's judgment, and he could have decided this, and he got in Guriel's way." So yeah, yes, Houston fans. So you you got to take Houston and national fans out of it, and Na- naturally they a have a co- bias. But yeah, I think you'd lose some of the umpire point Dexter people because it would be the umpire's judgment I'm that sa- he was safe, uh, and they'd say, "Hey, that's the umpire's judgment. He's in the line there, so yeah, I, that yeah. was his call." I don't think you'd have. I don't think you'd have. Of the one hundred percent of people that are currently saying it was the right call, he, it's definitely interference. I think ninety percent of them would not have this opinion if it, the call was called safe and no interference. I think 90% of them wouldn't be out there like, how did they not call interference? That's interference. No one would do that. I think the people arguing this are just people that are Point Dexter lawyer people. Yeah. I, I, think, I, it's, I think, think it's a very much, well, actually, crowd. Yeah, it's, it's pe- I, wouldn't even, I wouldn't say it's lawyer crew. I'd say it's people that got into umpiring for the wrong reasons. Um and that, that was so funny, having the people come out and be like, well, I umpired a little bit. And I'd be like, well, I did too. I was a fucking terrible ump, but I did too. If we're just going to say shit like that, who gives a shit? <laughs> you know how um, many fucking boys who like baseball umpired and went through the ump classes? Like, I went through a full week of five-hour sessions of ump classes when I was in, what, high school? Middle school? Like, everyone did that. Program. That doesn't make me yeah. know more than anyone else. Just reading Maybe rules. Yeah, I mean, if you're thinking I didn't apply to the job that gave me 30 bucks mozzarella sticks and Swedish fish for every game, <laughs> I mean, you have no idea who I am. Uh, I, was, I, I, I tweeted out something that was wrong um, because I thought they were replaying it because that's what the broadcast right. said. 
And then the ump comes out of the replay and says, no, he's out. Why did he do that? Because the whole stadium had no idea what was going on. The the stadium the stadium had official replay up on the big board. I know, um, and it wasn't everyone being assumed it was like, what? Everyone assumed it was replay because they, they went there. Um, so I think the umpire was just clarifying for the stadium because it was clearly a hubbub. Yeah, okay. Um, so so then I, 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 think, I, I, I when, think he kind of decided he had to do something. When Trey Turner was calling out Joe Torrey, I thought he was calling out Joe Torrey to find out if he was like safe or not safe or like what the answer to the replay was. And I was like, what? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. They couldn't replay it. It's not a reviewable call. They need... That needs to be looked at so thoroughly. Okay, let's let's have a big meeting and let's lay down what calls right now aren't replayable or aren't reviewable, and let's grandfather some of these in. Catcher's interference should be reviewable. Whatever the fuck this was should be reviewable. Almost all of them should be reviewable. And so ter- Trey Turner's like, Joe Torrey's right there. Ask him. So, so the next question was, it's not reviewable. So Dave Martinez says, okay, well, if it's not reviewable, then I want to protest this game. Yeah. And the umps are like, well, we don't know if you can protest it based on this. And like, what the fuck? We want to protest it. So they go to New York and they ask New York, hey, can they protest this game? And New York was reading them the rules of protesting to find out. And Trey Turner knew this. So he sees Joe Torrey and he's like, why don't you just ask him? He knows. Ask him yeah. if we can protest it. Which... uh Trey, Trey Turner's in the in the heat of the moment, and it makes so much sense. I was wrong, but I thought he was asking them to give the replay, which is yeah, no. insane. But no, he knew what was going on. But uh, I don't know, man. I don't think Joe Torrey's going to like Trey Turner he, when he, he hears he was all kinda, that. Yeah, Joe Torrey's getting old a little bit. Like Joe, Joe That's Torrey's the next not as, part of this convo. Th- yeah, Joe Torrey's not as hip as he used to, so no, he's not a Trey Turner fan. We don't know if he's a John Boy fan. Um, he had, uh, he had he's had a meeting about me. Article. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, and that was there. There was a couple funny things going on there. So they they added it for the World Series a level of insurance if Umps got something wrong that they could call New York for a rules check. So that's technically what that was. And I don't know if you saw Dave Martinez's interview after the game, but they were like, "So Dave, what were you actually appealing?" And he's like, "Well, he mentioned the rules challenge thing, and I wanted them to you know double check the rules." And then he goes. And I wanted them to make sure they watched that replay a few times. Just in like this coy, like, you guys know this is wrong. I don't care what that book says. I don't care what the dude on either end of the phone says. Um, so that was pretty funny. And then, yeah, I, I loved what Trey Turner was doing because that was the classic, like, I, I'm trying to think of a good Jakey example. Like, if there was a controversial home run call and Hank Aaron was the – was in the stands. That would be the equivalent of Trey Turner being like, ask Hank Aaron what a fucking home run is. He knows. Yeah. Um, that's well, kind of what he was doing he, with what, Joe Torrey. That's fine. But when he was saying the part where like, and he's just ducking his head hiding. Yeah. Why are you hiding? Like, and then saying it loud enough to try and get Joe to hear him. Like that was like, Oh no, dude, yeah. just step back. Step back. And ass crabs actually pulled him by the Jersey at one point. I was like, Shh, shut yeah. up, Trey. So, well, and they had a hot mic on him for a couple seconds. It was like, hey, I mean, I'm all for mics normally, but right now you do not want that mic on in front of Trey Turner. Yeah. I'm kind of over the let's interview athletes at their most heightened uh, senses of irrationality. Yeah. It's kind of I'm like we're going to put a mic in front of their faces when their brains are going so fast. Even like in-game interviews with managers, like the immediate post-game interview, like it's like that's a lot to do. Like that's what I I sent you. I sent you a clip a while back. I don't know if you remember. It was it was Bill Simmons and Rosillo, and they were talking about like this whole thing needs to be overhauled. Like it's ridiculous. Like even even after a game that we're interviewing like naked guys after they blew the game, like why do we have to do that? <laughs> like the the whole process is really weird when you think about it. Um but yeah, that's a that's a little disconnect. How did you feel to just blow that game? And then if he's mad about it, like they're like, Oh my God, he's handling this so poorly. Whoa, it's like <laughs> be a professional. You just lost the Super Bowl, Cam Newton. You're what, sp- what are you mad? What are you <laughs> upset? Come on. Yeah, dude, it's fucking weird. Anyway, <laughs> and this leads me into pulling Joe Torrey aside. I love Joe Torrey. I'm a Yankee fan. 
He's like my great grandpa, grandpa, you know, big Tory fan. He taught me that it's yeah. okay to cry. Big Joe Tory fan. Verducci pulling Joe Tory aside after the game when we know Tory hasn't really seen replays, talked to officials, read the rules, gone over it, and pulling him aside and thinking that he's going to give you something worthwhile just on the spot is insane to me when they did that jake on national tv i went oh no they're this isn't going to be a good look for anyone like what's old man joe tory gonna say on the spot he's gonna talk out of his ass and defend the mlb blindly yeah and then people are gonna hang on to his quotes let the dude go to his office, talk to his officials and his crew, read the rules, watch all the angles, then make a statement. Like, what are we doing? So yeah. people are upset with what Joe Torre said. I'm upset they even fucking put the mic in front of him. I would have ducked that if I was Joe Torre. Like, no, 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 no. I need to figure out my point of view first. Yeah, and I, I, I'll preface my statement too, which again, think think about, you know, if you if you were looking to leave your your five star review and say, well, hey, these guys are Yankee fans. Yeah, uh, yeah, we we are open about that. We love Joe Torre. Joe Torre is a part of our life. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it there was just it was kind of one of these whoa baseball moments where it's like, okay, you know, we just saw Juan Soto have an incredible series. Jordan Alvarez is the first player born in 1995 to homer in a World Series. Trey Turner's a young, great player. Everything that's going on here. Oh, let's kick it to our rules guy, 79-year-old Joe Torre. Um, I, and, and this isn't like I don't want to be hella ageist. Oh, shit. I don't know if those... I don't know if those words have been combined before, but I thought that was funny in my head. You're being hella but ageist. Th- think about someone you know that is 79 years old. Got it. It's one... And it's, now, wait, wait I, I got another way to put it. It's one sure. year away from being 80. It's one year away from being 80 years old. Think And just think about what your image is of an 80-year-old person. And, hey, Joe Torre's in great shape. He sounds good. Um, but think about the position he was put in. It's like what you said. They threw a microphone in front of him. He did a press conference after the game. That's and, fine. Uh, I like, mean, that's normal. And, the press conference after the game is good. But the on the mic when they're yeah. not even, like, done celebrating, I'm like, this is irresponsible. <laughs> this yeah. is so stupid. And he, uh, I, I don't know, like he still had some good Joe Torre in him. Like they asked about the phone call and he's like, yeah, it took way too long. And it was like, oh, that was, that was good. You know, normally you want to hear someone in his position say something that honestly. Uh, but yeah, the, the whole thing was a mess. And it's like, yes, he defended him because it's the, the one thing that Joe Torre was ready to go with to war with and probably why he agreed to the interview was it's a judgment call and judgment calls can't be reviewed. And that's it. Yeah. Yep. Whew. All right. Let's take a quick break and then we will come back and talk about this upcoming game seven, which is going to be wild. All right. I got my wish, Jake. Part of my wish has come true. Everyone kept asking me, what are you rooting for? Who are you rooting for? Who are you rooting for? And I said, I'm rooting for extra innings in game seven. It's a possibility. Game seven's here. A uh, little sadness. It's the last baseball game until April or March 28th or whatever. But strap in. We got Scherzer on the bump versus Granky and the kitchen sinks for both teams. I mean, this is going to be, please, please call your friends. Have a party. Enjoy the game. Let's have a party. Yeah, man. Um, Scherzer. I think you it. You know what? No, I don't want to start with Scherzer because I think everyone wants to start with Scherzer. And I'm actually going to go to my dude, Grinky. Um, and I, I think that's the wild card here. Like the story is going to be Scherzer because he missed the start. He was hurt. He gets a cortisone shot. And he's like, it's funny that Max Scherzer is like a half tier up from Zach Grinky, 
but that half tier just seems so much more impressive. Like, like Max Scherzer, it's like, oh, he's one of the pitchers of this decade. He's going to be a Hall of Famer, three-time Cy Young. And then it's funny, like, coming into this postseason, it was, Zach Greinke, he's got a sneaky Hall of Fame argument. Um, and now I, I saw a couple tweets about it, and I was like, oh, I actually love that storyline. But they said, it like, if Zach Greinke has a special start tonight, he could be like, punch his ticket to the Hall of Fame, which that's hilarious, but I also think there's some truth to it. I think he's got a good case already, but yeah, this would be like, you know, because as much as people don't want to admit that Hall of Fame voting is human and emotional, it is um, to a degree. And nice guys to the media will get in over dickheads to the media because the media Harold votes. Harold Baines. What's that? Harold Baines. The Her- the Harold the Harold Baines like old like he got to the old man committee that gets to vote vote you in. And like one was an ex teammate, I think two was one was an ex manager, and one was his ex owner or something like that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So and emotionally, if Granky does have like a, a special outing tonight, I think it cements it. It just kind of how yeah, just how it works. Um, man, the hitters are are hitting home runs, win ball games. If you're still out there trying to say. Uh, home runs don't win your game in the playoffs. Well, how many solo shots did we have and two run shots have we had in the last couple games? This whole World Series is solo shots and and two run shots. It's a walk in a home run league. And and by the way, uh, he was mentioned before, but Anthony Rendon's five RBIs, A, the first one to start the game that gets the Nationals on the then, board. The two-run homer that nullifies that whole conversation yeah, huge, we just huge. said, which would be a giant black eye on the sport, and that's my final thing I want to send to all the point texters. So you think it was a good call if the World Series was lost on that and that's everyone what everyone would be talking about the sport of baseball for five months? No, it would be a fucking joke. Yeah. It, it would be laughable. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, good good for Tony Meatballs for, for putting just a casual five-ruby day. Wanted to get back to him. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, i got a lot of hitters doing good things on both sides now, which is exciting. You got Granky versus Scherzer. Someone asked in the chat, who's not available? I think that's a great question. And I think Verlander is the only pitcher not available for Houston. Yeah, but I'd, I'd, I'd counter that with tell that to Justin Verlander. Like, yeah, I, I, I think no. If there was if there was like one right hand batter to get out of an inning, I I mean he he'll be out there. I agree with that, but I but for the most part, I think yeah, I think everyone else, um, like no one went. Strasburg and Verlander aren't really available. Yes, and everyone else is. I mean, yeah. uh, Corbin's available. Ani Ball's available. Yeah. Cole is available. Everyone's available besides Strasburg and Verlander. I think Strasburg is straight unavailable, obviously. I think, come on, he's not going to do that. Yeah, it would It would have to be like, – Strasburg would have to be almost like, extenuating circumstances like a 10th or 11th inning. And like a couple batters. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I hope this is a good game. I hope it's a really good game. Um, I don't know, man. Do you Scherzer pitched in what game one? Uh, Mad Max, he pitched in game uh, one. Yeah, seven or five innings pitch, two earned runs, seven Ks, one hundred twelve pitches in those five innings. So they they made him work a lot. Uh, they went Corbin, uh, to Rainey for one out, and then that was Hudson, Hudson and Doolittle each getting one point one. Um, Hudson not having the best of series. Uh, I don't think you can trust Rainey. I, I think the goal is Scherzer, Corbin, Anibal if you need him. Um, Anibal is available. Um, and then Hudson and Doolittle. I, I, do you think that uh, the Nats are seeing red? Ooh. John, John Boy first take. Um, I don't think momentum really matters, but if you were to do the discussion – I think the Nats are watching that replay over and over. And even though they won the game and they're watching Davey Martinez get get ejected 
And even though they won the game and they push it to game seven, I think they're kind of going to come out in a blind rage. The like, Umps I, won the Nationals the World Series. I mean, that's what it is. Um, I, if Dave Martinez has the easiest pregame speech ever. Sauce so versus everyone. Fuck the Astros. Fuck the Umps. Let's win the World Series. Yeah. Done. AJ Hinch's pregame is, uh, hey, we're good. We're the best team in baseball. Yeah, our, you know, we're going to stay to our game. The numbers are there for us. Zach is going to go out there, and spin rate's going to be high, and we're, um, yeah. I, I don't know. I, it, it's, Do it for it's Taubman. It, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeeps. I apologize. Yeah. I apologize. It's a bad joke. Edit. Bad joke. Edit <laughs> that out. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess that's the part where I don't really know. Uh, like Max Scherzer versus Grinky. If anyone's been listening to Talking Baseball, you know I'm taking Scherzer. Um, in Houston, I still think that lineup is is better, and I mean the play should be rocking. Um, I don't know. Garrett Cole's kind of the wild card, right? Um, when would they hand it off to him? Because Garrett Cole's got what three innings, maybe. Yeah, maybe. So I mean, is that if if they're up three one and Granky struggling in the fourth, does that mean it's Garrett Cole time? Um, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, he he's the one. He he's what I can't get my mind wrapped around because he could be a true game over. The great equalizer. Um, so. I, I don't know, and there I, I'll be honest. There's obviously a little bit of me at this point that is rooting for the Nationals, just because it's it's the old guys. Uh, like I like I said, the Astros the Astros started celebrating their second World Series. Let's be honest. Um, maybe not the players, but the fans for sure. Here here's um, where I'm at. Here's where I'm at with uh, the Astros. Still like watching a lot of their players. Altuve, Cole, Verlander, uh, even Bregman. I like that he brings this talking point to the table, you know? And I was rooting for them in certain games. Um, but, Jake, Nationals fans haven't annoyed me in the slightest. Right. I haven't had any Nationals fans in my mentions being obnoxious, defensive, and crying. I've dealt with nothing but annoying, crying, whining Astros fans who don't understand that I was upset in the ALCS because the Yankees lost. I don't give a fuck who beat us. I don't care about you guys the way you yeah. think I do. But now you've annoyed me. And Nationals fans have been nothing but pleasant. So go get it, Nats. Yeah. But again, um... I don't really care if it's game seven. Like a walk off in Game Seven of the World Series is pretty fucking cool. That would be cool. That would, that be, would a be a really good moment. Joe Carter, Big Daddy. Um, yeah, and I don't know. And it 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 is tough to let the internet affect your thoughts because I you know I literally just read a tweet that was like, oh, you guys are just mad. The Astros won the World Series last year, and it's like, well, it's actually it's the Red Sox last year, but I don't I don't want to do this. Um, so it's tough to let those no, people affect Astros you. fans want us to be rivals. I don't care about the Astros. I care about the Red Sox, and I put a lot of energy into hating them, and I don't put energy into en hating any other team. I don't care. Yeah, I, I don't know. See, I'm I'm a little – it's a little more NBA in me. Like, I, I like a little more short-term rivalries, and, yeah, they've been the two of the better teams in the AL, so there's something fun there. Um, to say like Houston's our daddy, which I saw some of those tweets, and it's like, well, you just you just lost, so good good for you guys. Enjoy that. Um, yeah, I I don't know because I like you're saying I still enjoy a lot of these Houston guys. Um, you know, it's it's who's gonna be the hero? Who's who's gonna who's gonna walk away with the the MVP? Um, you know, if if Houston, I think uh, who who's got an argument? I think Springer, Altuve, Bregman <laughs> all could do it with one big game. Um, I mean, if Garrett Cole comes out and he does something special, does he have an argument? I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. How about Zach Grinke? Yeah, he could be special, man. Zach Grinke could win his, his second game in Game 7. So that that's where it's at, and that's where it's wild. And I think it's, it's so funny because we make a point out of it in the MLB season. And I think this is the only thing 
because I know you were coming down on NFL fans, how it's easy to be an NFL fan. The part that sucks about being an NFL Easier. fan is a- after four games, your season could be out the window. <laughs> you you could play four solid games, lose at the end, and your season's done. That sounds Baseball, delightful. You could do that, and you could have a pretty nice week afterwards. Um, you, you could come back, win the next three, and you're moving on up. Yeah, ba- um, ba- Band-Aid I, instead of a slow, painful tear. We, or a slow, fun tear. Um, sounds like me in college. I would say this. It's pretty sick that a sport we say, like, hey, baseball, one game. You can't let that get to you. And it comes down to one game, and it's like, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. 180-something yeah. games comes down to one. You could hit three line drives at, you know, the shortstop, second baseman, and the third baseman, and you're looked at as a bad guy. Uh, you went 0 for 3. And someone oh. bra- Zimmerman breaks his bat twice and bloops a couple in. So that's, uh, that's the beauty of it. It's a fucked up sport. That ends this show. Enjoy game seven. Uh, we'll be live tonight or tomorrow morning, whatever, to recap everything that happened. Thanks, guys.